have a feeling this is going to be a bit of a long one. Hello lovely people, it's Nicole and today I am doing a combined November and December wrap up. Um, I mentioned in my last video that uh, life kind of got away from me at sort of end of November, December and I got really busy and never actually ended up uploading a November wrap up. I filmed it, just never edited or uploaded it and I can't find it on my computer. So I'm just gonna combine November and December. So because there's so many of them, I'm going to go through them fairly quickly. Um, if you want more in-depth reviews, I have written reviews on Goodreads for the majority of them. So the first book I read was The Baby by Abigail Barnett. This is the, I believe, final book in the Boss series. So when I started reading this, I had it on my phone and I was just reading while I ate like lunch in the cafeteria or something at my school. And I had to stop reading and leave and go back to my dorm because I was getting so emotional from this book. It was just an emotional roller coaster from start to finish. I mean, as with all of Abigail Brennan's books, it addressed some really, really difficult issues, but I think it handled them really well and really realistically. Trigger warning for depression and sort of suicidal thoughts and um, sexual assault mention. I just want to warn anyone who might be going into it that those are in there. So I definitely gave this book five stars. Then I read Six of Crows by Leigh Bardugo and this book, wow. I love the sort of heist vibe. Every time I mention this book in a video I talk about this but it reminds me of Leverage, the TV show if you've seen that. It's really really good. It was on TNT a couple years ago. Um, but just that fantastic sort of big cast working together to pull off this awesome heist. And I love the world that was carried over from the Grisha trilogy. I love the characters in this. I fell in love with them almost instantly and I am just rooting for them. I'm rooting for them to succeed in their various missions. I'm rooting for them for them to succeed in their relationships. I just, I want them to be happy and to get, all get their happily ever afters and I'm really scared that they're not going to in the second book. But, fingers crossed. I gave this one five stars. Then I read Winter by Marissa Meyer, which is at my dorm, so I don't have a physical copy with me, but this was a fantastic finale. I could not have wished for anything more. It was wonderfully action-packed and so much fantastic character development. I loved reading from the point of view of Winter. I loved how she was the perfect balance of she did have some mental illness things going on, but she was also really aware of them and at times she used those to her advantage to sort of manipulate the people around her. And she was so smart while at the same time having these issues and having to deal with them and cope with them. And also, Jason, Jason, however you pronounce his name, I remember hating him in the previous book but the second he arrived in winter, oh boy, fell head over heels. It was so beautiful and I could not be more happy with how it all turned out. Then I read Binge by Tyler Oakley. This is his autobiography memoir and I really enjoyed it. It really felt like I was just watching one of Tyler's videos while reading this. His voice it comes across so clearly. I also really enjoyed the format. With each chapter change, it's a complete change of subject and sometimes things are revisited, but for the most part the chapters feel very separated from each other, which I thought near the beginning of the book I would get tired of and it would feel like I was being just jerked around from topic to topic but it really felt like I got just the perfect amount from each each story. I loved hearing some of the behind the scenes of Tyler's life. He said in an interview at one point that you could watch all his videos and still not know like 90% of what's in this and that is definitely true. So if you're a fan of Tyler Oakley, I highly recommend picking this up. Although I will give it a trigger warning for eating disorders, there's brief descriptions of abuse and discussion of depression and suicidal thoughts but I gave this 4.5 stars. Then I read Sex Criminals Volume 2, Two Worlds, One Cop, and while 
I liked this one. I know a lot of people really, really love this one, even more than the first volume, but I didn't really get that. Maybe it was just the mood I was in while I was reading it, but it just didn't really, you know, get feel that, like, spark. I thought there were definitely a number of moments that were really funny, there were some really great sex ed moments that I appreciated, but it just didn't really hit the spot for me, and I wish we'd gotten a little bit more character development. I just didn't really connect with the characters that much, and I also got really confused a lot of the time because there was a lot of jumping around with characters and timelines that made it a little hard to follow what was going on sometimes. So I gave this 3.5 stars. Then I read The Unbeatable Squirrel Girl Volume 2, Squirrel You Know It's True, and I love Squirrel Girl. She is so sassy and funny and weirdly relatable for a girl who's best friends with squirrels, but this volume was even better than the first. Now that we would sort of got introductions out of the way, we really got into the story and the characters and they're just so endearing and hilarious. And there's little asides at the bottom of each page that sort of commentary that are absolutely hilarious. So I gave this five stars. Speaking of Marvel, then I read Miss Marvel Generation Y and this was great. I enjoyed the first volume, but I didn't love it because it was a lot of just sort of set up and didn't really get a ton of time to explore the characters or really get into big plot, but we did in this one and it was so much fun. Really funny, really just engaging and almost addictive. I love Kamala, I think she's such a fantastic hero that is a great role model for young girls and I am so grateful that we have this comic. So I gave this five stars. Then I read Rat Queens Volume 2. Uh, the far-reaching tentacles of Narigoth, and I liked this one, but I didn't love it. I know a lot of people really, really love the Rat Queen series, and maybe I just need to get a little bit further into it, but I enjoy it, I just don't love it. I feel like I liked the first one a little bit better, but I just, I didn't really feel connected with the characters in this. And there was a lot more character development, but I felt kind of lost in the story. It just, something about this left me feeling unsatisfied. That being said, the Rat Queens are still really funny and just entertaining to read about. And the art style is really good, so I gave it four stars. Then, wow, I read more comics. Uh, Deadpool Classic, Volume 1. This contains uh, New Mutants 98, which was the first appearance of Deadpool. Uh, Deadpool the Circle the Circle Chase 1 through 4, Deadpool 1994 1 through 4, and the first issue of Deadpool 1997. So this is sort of the first appearances of Deadpool bind up and I enjoyed it, but I mostly enjoyed it in the last single issue. That was the first issue of the 1997 series of Deadpool. For most of the art style, it's very much a sort of classic comic book style, very dark and sort of chaotic, and I'm not a huge fan of that style. I find it sort of hard to keep track of and just not visually appealing to me. Um, again, that's, you know, personal preference, but once we got to the final comic, the art style got a lot more sort of cartoony, which that's, that's a good thing. Um, and brighter, which I really liked. I really love the art style of that last comic. Also, the first couple comics were really still trying to find sort of who Deadpool is, and so you don't really get a ton of his sort of signature sass until the last comic, which is unfortunate because that's really why I picked this up because Deadpool is so funny and I just wanted to know his history, um, but. I definitely think I'll pick up the next editions of Deadpool Classic uh, so that I can read more. So I gave this 3.5 stars. Then I read Pop Sonnets by Eric Diedrichsen and this is just charming and funny and so enjoyable. It has some of my favorite songs in it, it has some songs from my childhood, it has a great mix of 
I mean, it has like Bohemian Rhapsody and I Want It That Way and Call Me Maybe and Britney Spears. It's a good mix of songs and they're all so funny. I have a new favorite pastime that is just reading someone one of these sonnets and having them guess the song. Uh, it, it's, it just makes me smile and it's cute and fun and I give it five stars. Then I read See How They Run by Ali Carter and this is the second book in the All Fall Down series and this book I think was even better than the first. It felt more action-packed. I felt like we got a lot more character development from the main character. That was sort of the one thing that I felt like was a drawback. I felt like we didn't really get a lot of development for Noah and Rosie and Megan who I really liked in the first book and so I wish we gotten to see a little bit more of them but we did get a lot of really good character development for Gracie and for Lila which was a lot of fun and some some good things with Alexi always good things with Alexi any scene with Alexi is good uh, and then I also really enjoyed meeting Jamie who is my future husband <laughs> let's just leave it at that I am so intrigued by where this plot left off I cannot wait for this next one to come out, so I gave this four stars. Then I read Fun Home, a family tragicomic by Alison Bechtel. Well, I think my main problem with this was just that the story jumped around a lot in the timeline that got a little confusing, but I liked the art style and the writing style. I thought they were really nice to look at and enjoyable to read. There, the storyline felt a little lacking. There wasn't really a big sort of climax. But I, that is understandable given that it it's not a story, it's her life. But from a sort of literary point of view, I definitely think this was fantastic and definitely, definitely, definitely worth a read. I also really want to go see the Broadway musical, but that requires money to like get to New York and buy tickets and all that jazz. <laughs> but I definitely recommend this. I gave it four stars. Then I read my first of four Colleen Hoover books within like four days and that is November 9. Uh, this may be my favorite Colleen Hoover book so far. It it was so good. I absolutely fell in love with both Fallon and Will. I was heartbroken when they were when things were not working out and I was overjoyed when things were. I thought the plot of this one was really really interesting. As always Colleen Hoover knows how to throw in the best twists and turns and always keep you on your toes. This ripped out my heart and then put it back together again so many times and it was really just funny and fun and I love it and I want like 10,000 epilogues about Fallon and Will because they're adorable. I gave it five stars. And then I read First and Then by Emma Mills and I enjoyed this. It was really predictable but still enjoyable. I thought that the main character was, she grew on me over time but in the beginning she felt kind of special snowflakey and she kept referring to the freshman girls at her school as prostitutes, which pissed me off because it's, it, it's just so cringy and slut shamey and gross but as time went on she sort of you know grew and learned and definitely became so much better I think she went through some really good character development in this book I really liked the love interest I thought he was very sort of sexy broody all that jazz I also really liked Maribel I think she had a really fun sort of little love goody vibe Overall, it didn't really stand out that much. It felt sort of generic YA contemporary romance, but I gave it sort of a... This is one of those times where I really wish Goodreads had more of an in-between rating system instead of just straight up, you know, single stars. Um, but I gave it, I want to say, like a 3.85 because it felt like better... I, I enjoyed it enough for it to be more than like a 3 star, but it didn't feel spectacular enough to be a four star. So next I read Hopeless by Colleen Hoover and before anything else I just want to give a huge trigger warning. There are in-depth discussions and descriptions of both sexual assault 
and suicide as well as some sort of discussion without naming of depression and PTSD. Now that that's out of the way, wow. <laughs> um, like I said, we'll talk about November 9, Colleen Hoover definitely knows how to pull out all the stops with the twists and turns. I never know what's gonna happen. I always think I know what's gonna happen in Colleen Hoover books and then suddenly everything changes. This was no different. In the very beginning, I was a little worried that it would get kind of petty teenagery just because of the way Skye's classmates were acting towards her, but luckily that did not last very long and we quickly moved into the actual plotline. Character-wise, I liked Holder, but the fact that his name is Holder pissed me off because I kept wanting to call him Holden and I kept messing up. Guy, I loved. She was so funny and sassy and I think the moment that it really solidified my love for her was when she critiqued her classmates insults for not being good enough and it just that sort of like, come on, if you're gonna insult me, at least be creative about it. I love her. She's hilarious. And then Brecken. I love Brecken. It's partially just because we have the same sense of humor and he is just the light of my life. I gave this five stars. Then I read Point of Retreat by Colleen Hoover and this is the sequel to Slammed and I didn't like this as much as Slammed. It didn't really stand out as like one of my favorite Colleen Hoover books, but neither did Slammed. Uh, I just don't really love Lakin and Will as much as I love some of her other couples. I didn't really remember a lot of sort of the side characters from Slammed, so I was a little lost at times, but overall it was definitely an emotional roller coaster. There was at one point I literally put the book down and was just yelling at it because talking to my books is a thing that I do that I'm now admitting on the internet. So while I didn't love this, I still enjoyed it and it's Colleen Hoover and her writing, no matter what, is still absolutely gorgeous so I gave it four stars. Then I read This Girl which is the sort of third book sort of companion. Um, and that, that follows Lakin and Will's story from Will's point of view, but it's like him telling his point of view to Lakin and her, she's like commenting on it, which I thought was so much fun. It made it just a joy to read. I was worried going into it that it would just be like the exact same story as Slammed, but it wasn't. We got, we got bonus scenes and it was fun. And I really, really enjoyed it. I thought it was well done, well formatted. Um, Will's point of view added a lot of sort of extra depth. Granted, some of that extra depth was things that I just sort of assumed were Will's motivations during Slammed and was surprised that Lakin didn't see them. But nonetheless, I still really enjoyed this. I thought it was really nice to get that sort of wrap up along with the alternate point of view, so I gave it four stars. Alright, so those are all the books I read in November and December. If you've read any of these books, let me know what you thought of them in the comments. I love you and I will see you later.